Have you ever wondered, what do I have in common with a slug? Or a fly? You know those flies that come and sit on your food? They've been on dog excrement, on a dying animal, and then they arrive on your food. What do you have in common with a fly? Or a wasp? Don't you hate wasps? I mean, they're so arrogant. Buzzing around you, they don't leave you alone, they keep coming back. An earthworm. It's a pretty pathetic creature, an earthworm. What do you have in common with an earthworm? In fact, what do you have in common with anything? So the big question, the philosophical question, it's not what do you have in common with a slug, it's what connects us all. Now science gives us answers to that question, but so does philosophy. And funnily enough, some of the earliest philosophers were just obsessed with this question. What unites everything? What is the fundamental stuff that connects us all? Let's go back about 600 years before Christ to Miletus, which is part of Turkey today. The first Greek philosophers asked themselves this question. What is the stuff that unites us all? Take Thales. Thales thought that it was water. Water is what you have in common with the fly, with any other living creature. You need water and there's water within you. So there's some logic there. Anaximenes thought it was air, what he called pneuma. For Anaximenes, it was a question of compressing air, more or less. The more compressed air is, the more solid the object. That's what unites clouds and stones. Anaximander said it wasn't quite air, but some sort of substanceless, infinite thing that he called the aperon. In other words, there is something connecting us, but we're not quite sure what it is. Now, to me, that's a bit of a cop-out. Heraclitus. Heraclitus, brilliant philosopher. He noticed that everything changes. The only constant is change. As they say in Latin, mutatis mutandis. So, if something is alive, it's moving, it's changing. Which is why you've got to do sport. Which is why you've just got to get up in the morning and do things. To know that you're alive, you've got to keep moving. He said, you can never step in the same river twice because the river is constantly changing. And yet it has a single identity, just like fire. The flame of a fire is constantly changing and yet its identity as fire is one. Fascinating. That, for Heraclitus, was the binding, underlying substance of everything, fire. Now these ancient Greeks had a name for this thing that unites us all. They called it the Archi. The Archi is the common underlying principle. It's what you've got in common with a toad, or that wasp, or a spider. Now, other Greek philosophers asked this big question. Possibly the most famous is the great Pythagoras. He took ideas from Babylonia, from Egypt, he brought them into Greece, and he said, what connects everything is number. There's a mathematical structure to everything, to music, to the planets, the stars, human beings, all is number. He was an Olympian, an athlete, and a mystic. His followers liked to sweep away the, uh, the ground whenever they'd sat on it and things like this. Pretty strange stuff. Keep asking that question. What is it that unites you with everything else? Not just with animals that you don't like, but people you don't like. What do you have in common? A science will tell you it's atoms, fine. But maybe there's something deeper. Maybe if we can accept that we have a common structure. Maybe if we can accept that there's some kind of underlying principle that binds us, unites us all, we'll be happier. And you won't stamp on that spider. You won't swat that fly. You won't shoo away that wasp. You'll live in a more peaceful world. The world that the pre-Socratic philosophers were looking for. The world of the Archie.